Shush! 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 It's time for The Shelf. Whanganei District Libraries Radio on Beagle Radio. 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 Kia ora koutou katoa. Welcome to The Shelf, a Whangarei District Libraries radio show on Beagle Radio 88.1 FM. My name's Carly and I'm with Glenn today. Hi Glenn. Hey Carly, how are you going? Good. Uh, we've got a cool shelf uh, episode lined up for you guys today. We're going to be talking uh, about New Zealand Sign Language Week, which is happening... Yep. This week, I think, yep. Right now. Um, and as we speak... And as well as that, we're going to um, be talking a little bit about what's happening in the public library world, what we're reading, and what else are we going to talk about? things happening in the library. We've got a smoke-free exhibition happening, which is quite a big thing. Mm. Um, So lots of stuff uh, going on in the next hour. So thanks for joining us. Yeah, awesome. So um, just um, on a bit of a sombre note to start with, um, just um, our Whangarei Libraries this past week has lost a very special member of our library family, family, Monica. And so we're just going to pay a little tribute to her at the start of this episode. So when I think about Monica, I think about her kindness, her positivity, and her energetic attitudes towards whatever task was at hand, big and small. She was at our library for two years, much of which was spent as a team leader. And she was a great leader, empathetic and assertive at the same time. Everyone knew she had our backs. It's funny, not in a ha-ha funny way, but to think that if our local listeners are tuning in, um, many of you might have actually had little interactions with her at the information desk. She might have bantered with you about a book, made a quip to you with her her sharp sense of humour. She most likely complimented you and made you smile. And she brightened your day a bit, as was her way. It's the little things about a person that make the biggest impact sometimes. For instance, Mon and I always complimented each other's quirky earrings if we were feeling a bit fashionable that day. (laughs) Hmm. Um, And she's the only person I've ever heard utter the words, I love shelving. (laughs) Oh, wow. (laughs) Which is quite a niche thing to libraries, Hmm. but believe me, it's a rare and appreciated quality. (laughs) Hmm. She was a great baker, a great gardener, a great crafter. She often shouted her weekend staff to coffees, which, if she wasn't already super popular, that would have made her, like, (laughs) extremely popular. Um, And she was big into sustainable solutions, which is an inspiration. And, oh my gosh, did she have so many funny and interesting stories for every situation. (laughs) She definitely kept us entertained. We will miss Monica very much, but her legacy of kindness we will carry with us, just like everyone who knew her. We're all better people for having known her. I also want to publicly thank our library manager, Paula, who was such a friend to Monica in these past few months. I respect so much how she visited her often and kept Monica a part of our library team when she wasn't physically able to be with us at work. So thanks, Paula. And yeah, so lots of tears shed amongst the library staff this week, but in time when we think of Monica, I'm sure we'll be smiling and remembering her goodness. Hmm. And, well, um, thank you for saying that, Carly. That was yeah. lovely. Thank you. <laughs> and and, on, on yeah, carry note, on. Yeah, we have a song lined up um, that must have been one of Monica's favourites. <laughs> Maybe, yeah. As yeah. Um, we farewelled uh, Monica on Monday, um, this was the song uh, that she must have chosen to play. So we thought we'd give it a whirl here. Um, so this goes out to you, Monica.
chez toi Hold On Tight by Electric Light Orchestra in honour of our friend Monica. And now I think we're going to talk about what we're reading and watching and um, all that jazz. So mm. um, what do you have lined up, Glenn? All right, well, uh, a couple of things I've been... Well, one thing I've been reading, and it's kind of a weird... Well, it's not weird at all, but um, <laughs> it feels a little weird. It's a really old children's book series that I'm reading at the moment to my daughter. Oh, awesome. Who's somewhat... Uh, I'd say a little bit of like a reluctant reader. I, she's yeah. never got that book series that's really just mm. captivated her and shot her off into yeah. being really passionate. So not yet, you mean? <laughs> not yet, yeah. So I tried all sorts of things, and then what I've done is I've pulled out of my um, box of books from my childhood that my mum yeah. kept and then passed back to me yeah. uh, that's sitting in a box in the garage. It's a, um, a series called The Three Investigators. Three Investigators. Written between like the mid-60s, and then it kind of carried on to the 80s. Um, yeah. The ones I've got start at number one, like in the mid-60s. So The Three Investigators, it's an American juvenile detective book series, first published as Alfred Hitchcock and The Three Investigators. Oh, wow. So Alfred Hitchcock is sort of linked into the into the introducing each book, mm. and it's kind of uh, has a cameo appearance. Oh, that's cool. Um, and... So it's about three boys that, that start a detective agency. Their age is kind of never said, but they're kind of like early teens, so maybe yeah. like 12 to 14, they can't drive yet. Yeah. But because they win a, a competition to get the use of a luxury Rolls-Royce <laughs> chauffeured car, <laughs> it enables them to travel around Hollywood and Los Angeles doing detective work. Wow. Oh, okay, this sounds like a really cool premise. The three, <laughs> the three characters, their names are Jupiter Jones... Jupiter Jones. He's like the um, Sherlock Holmes of the of the group, and there's Pete um, Pete Crenshaw. He's the athletic, mm. physical guy, and then there's yeah. Bob Andrews. Records and research is his wow. is his role in the in their group, and he he actually part time works at the library. Would you believe? Oh, that's very cool. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> he's got an injury to his leg, which prevents him from doing all the super outdoor stuff. But he um, that's his role. Yeah. And yeah, and then, uh, so there's usually some sort of what seems to be a supernatural phenomenon happening that they investigate, but they kind of use the latest scientific technology. So they have things like um, a telephone, they get around everywhere on their bicycles, <laughs> and they uh, have um, a camera and a tape recorder, yeah. and they try and, you know, solve the mysteries using science, logic, and deduction. Yeah. And yeah. Oh, that's very cool. I'm picturing, like, this could be a cool show in the vein of, like, Stranger Things, like that. Um, yeah. Yeah, yep. the kids, yeah. Out on their own doing oh, crazy yeah. things, yeah, yeah without, without so much of the sci-fi. Yeah. Well, yeah. it's a little bit sci-fi. Like, the one I'm reading at the moment is the case of the Whispering Mummy. Mm. So they're helping out a um, professor whose mummy that he's studying <laughs> appears to be whispering to him. Oh. Mm, like as in a mummy, as yeah. in a, a yeah. an Egyptian mummy, <laughs> mummy not yeah. his mummy. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So uh, I thought well, when I started reading this, I was like, "What am I doing?" Like, um, <laughs> she's not going to enjoy this, but she's actually really enjoying it. Yeah. I thought because okay. the, the role models are sort of young boys that it might not 
um, go down well. But yeah. in truth, uh, she's really enjoying it. We're on to our third one in the series. Yeah. It's the sort of books that are falling apart. You know, they're so <laughs> old that um, the pages are yeah. all like yellowed and stuff. But yeah, lots yeah. of fun. So that's the three investigators. Oh, that sounds really cool. Yeah, I read all the famous fires, which were my mum's versions when I was, when nice. I was little. So I think it's, yeah, it's a thing to read your parents' favourite books when they were a kid. Mm. Yeah, so. And did that help you? get into reading by having those books do you think so i think i was already a little bit into this is like primary school mm. but then it was probably harry potter that <laughs> that really kicked oh, it yeah. off right. yeah because i was right at that age where they were releasing it like every other year <laughs> when okay. i was in primary school well so yeah. you've grown up with it that's very exciting mm. yeah that was fun i only discovered harry potter after the all the books had been written <laughs> yeah. and the movies had been done <laughs> then i dared to read one <laughs> And speaking of, we've got a Lego display of Harry Potter at the library, just FYI. <laughs> True, yeah, it's in the True. children's room at the moment, so yeah, come and check it out. Cool. There's lots of uh, different Lego uh, bits from the from the books and movies. Yeah. And, so what are you reading, Carly? Um, well, speaking of children's classics, one of the things that I've currently got checked out of the library, very not sophisticated, is the complete Peanuts <laughs> comics from 1959 to 1960. I think there's like a whole lot of um like the complete list of uh the complete collection of the peanuts comics as in like charlie brown and snoopy i'm talking about Mm -hmm. um so yeah i got those out of the library because obviously it's like it's it's one of my favorites i think but i was watching like new yorker videos where the cartoonists were explaining their um like process of drawing so i got really into (laughs) into that kind of art um so um yeah, and as I was reading, I was like, um, yeah, you read it differently as an adult to as kids. Um, and I found, like, there's a lot of, like, h- humor they're finding in very mundane things. And sometimes they ask, like, big existential questions, but the punchline is there's not really an answer to it. Mm. And so that's what I, yeah, I recommend reading those kinds of, like, revisiting your favorite comics and that kind of stuff as what, an adult. What year did you say it was done? So this one that I'm reading was 1959, but I think it started about 10 years or so prior. Like, the, is, is it still going today? It's not done. No, or not, not with the original. Do they just republish them? Yeah, yeah they're Maybe I'm they're making, thinking like, back to my childhood. Sets of them. Yeah. Right. And yeah. are they they funny? Are they? They're funny. I love it. Yeah. Are they all three three squares? Not all of them. No. Some of them are like full page ones. Some of them are you know yeah three squares. Some of them are in between. So yeah, the way you said it was about mundane things makes me think of Seinfeld, like it's a show about nothing. Yeah. Is it a comic about nothing? Sort of, yeah. Maybe like friendship and all, you know childhood, but yeah, it is kind of finding humour in the everyday kind of thing. Or, yeah. Great. So, yeah, recommend those. We've got a few of those editions, but there's a whole lot of them that maybe I should suggest to buy. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah. you definitely can get Peanuts from the library. I'm not yeah. sure that you can get the Three Investigators series that I talked about oh. from the library because I think <laughs> it's probably well out of print. But I will follow that one up and, and have a look. Yeah, that's cool. Hey, the other thing I've been not reading but watching, I watched uh, a movie, but I have seen the book of this movie. So it's a movie based on a book. Uh, the movie is called Breath, the book that it's based on by the same title, by the Australian author Tim Winton. Tim Winton, yeah. Yeah, are you familiar with any of his books? I only know the name, right. <laughs> like by reputation, yeah. Oh, I'm yeah. Quite, oh, I've read quite a few of Tim Winton's, oh. I realised. Yeah. Um, so I highly recommend him. He's great, a great, um, great author. Uh, he's written, how many? A dozen books maybe and some short stories as well. Mm-hmm. Some for adults, some for children. Uh, this one, Breath, was written in 2008. A lot of his ones are set by the sea, I think, in Western Australia. Mm-hmm. Um, yes. But, yeah, it was not a bad movie ab- adaption of this book. Um, the particular the story uh, set in a small town, Western Australia, mm-hmm. and it's narrated uh, by an adult looking back on his childhood in the 70s when he gets into surfing. He's got kind of... Um, oh. He's got a mate called Looney, who's a bit of a risk-taker, daredevil kind of guy, and they get befriended by an older, legendary surfer and take up surfing and surf some really big waves. Um, But there's a... uh, So it's that kind of story. Also, they're young teenagers. Uh, It's not a... It's 
it's fun, but there's also some darker elements to it because the main character, Pikelet, gets involved uh, in a sort of a mm, kind of relationship with the wife of the, the older yeah. guy. So yeah. it's kind of a bit um, yeah. awkward. <laughs> I don't know how else to put it. It kind of gets a bit real. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, so it's a sort of a cool book. Some of the themes, it's like a book about risk because um, they take a lot of risks doing the surfing these giant waves with just out on their own mm. and um, finding a balance between like they want to be something, but it'll be extraordinary. And this breathing is the theme through all the book in a number of different ways from yeah. holding your breath underwater to dad snores um, <laughs> and there's sort of like this asphyxiation thing going on there as well, which uh, you have to read the book or watch the movie to find out more yeah. about that. So, yeah, really yeah. cool book, and I highly recommend Tim Winton. Great, oh, cool. great writer. Yeah, that sounds like a good one. Um, the only other thing I've been reading lately, because I got really into this author, Mimi Matthews, who writes historical romance books. Mm -hmm. So I read, like, she has about, I think, like 10 books at the library or something. So I got them all out, and I probably started it, like I probably mentioned it, on the last radio show, and I've like finished them all. Are they but, sorry? Are they uh, with the love hearts on them? Are they in the romance? Yeah, they're in the yeah. romance section with the love hearts on them. Um, yeah, so set maybe like Regency time, most of them. And um, I would recommend them if you're um, a fan of like Georgette Heyer, apparently she's quite similar to her. So I think that's my next author I'm going on to. The Georgette Heyer, I know a lot of um, library customers are really into her. Um, so she was. Georgette Heyer did write, like, back in the day, but Mimi Matthews is, like, a contemporary author writing old-fashioned books. So, yeah, I can recommend those ones too. Cool. Yeah. Uh, it's always been... Uh, I have actually read a romance novel just to see what it was just like, one. you know. <laughs> and I've read a Western. You know, I've, I've yeah. tried some different genres, but... Yeah, it's good to try different genres, yeah. It, it's yeah. always interested me that within the romance... Uh, genre there's so many subgenres. Yeah, so Regency really England is quite a narrow time frame, mm. but there's a whole subgenre of Regency, just like there's yeah. a whole subgenre of historical Scottish people. Yeah, yeah. There's definitely a lot of the Scots. <laughs> um, there's the whole werewolf, yeah. uh, supernatural type ones. Yeah, and then like the modern day, like yeah, doctors and nurses. <laughs> doctors and nurses. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. And as we often say, there's usually the titles usually, oh, this is more Mills and Boone, but the Italian billionaires, yeah. um, what else would come? The Italian billionaires, secret mistress, baby secret baby. Yeah, there you go. There you go. Yeah. Yeah. The, the titles can be quite funny, I think. Mm. Like so you're recommending job. Mimi Matthews? Yeah, Mimi Matthews. Definitely recommend her. Yep. I really enjoy those ones. Great. All righty. Well, that's what we've been reading. Yeah. Uh, and now onto something different. It's sign language week this week. Yeah, sign language week, which is so that's um yeah this week from technically from the sixth to the twelfth of May. It's organised by Deaf Aotearoa to like base essentially raise awareness and encourage people to learn sign language. Um, there's lots of information and stories and resources on nzslweek.org.nz, including how-to videos and such as. There's a video of 660 signing their song Pepeha, which nice. is a cool one to, to watch and learn from. And, of course, there's resources in our non-fiction section at the library under the call number 419.93, which is upstairs at Central um, Library, or you can always request on our online catalogue if this is something you're interested in. And mm. I think, um, yeah, we had an event on Sunday, a sign language event, Glenn. We did, yeah. And yesterday I caught up with um, Harry, a.k.a. Beryl Harrison, uh, who works for Deaf Aotearoa, and she put on an event uh, in the library, as Carly just mentioned, on Sunday. But I caught up with her and just asked about um, what she does and um, about sign language week. So we'll cut away and have a listen to that. We're going to talk a little bit about New Zealand Sign Language Week, which is happening this week. Mm -hmm. uh, but can you just tell me a little bit about 
yourself and and your involvement with Sign Language Week? Sure, sure. Well, first of all, happy Sign Language Week. You know, so big hand waves to you and uh, and everybody else. So Sign Language Week is uh, one week of the year where we get to celebrate celebrate the 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 beauty and like the richness of New Zealand sign language and um, and the deaf community and Mm -hmm. their achievements and the hearing allies that walk alongside them. And so this week there's all sorts of um, activities and events being held all over New Zealand. Um, Air New Zealand have just um, put on a full signing plane um, full of uh, deaf community members. Um, We had the Sign Language Awards celebrating deaf heroes um, and, and like I say, hearing allies as well. So there's events all over the place. Um, and, and it's a great celebration. You'll see sign language interpreters on TV, um, our deaf heroes on TV and everything. So, yeah, it's one week that, uh, that we can really shine and wow. thrive. And that's the theme for this one about sign language can thrive and anybody can sign anywhere. Yep. So that's the theme for this week. Oh, cool. Yeah. And so it started this past Sunday, so it yes. runs Sunday to Sunday? Sunday to Sunday, basically, yep. yes. And um, and so uh, just on Sunday we had our um, an amazing event in Northland. Mm-hmm. And so, first of all, big shout out to Whangarei Library for letting us host the event here in the library. That was, um, that was pretty cool. So what my role is, um, I work for Deaf Aotearoa and my, my position is a first signs facilitator. Now we support uh, families and whānau of deaf and hard of hearing children up to the age of five. So it's an amazing service that has, has, is world leading really mm. um, because we can capture the young deaf hard of hearing children early on so they can get language right from the very start. So that's that's pretty magic. And um, the co-papa of First Signs is deaf-led. And mm-hmm. um, so deaf can be role models for these, you know, deaf tamariki. Um, now, clearly, I'm not deaf. Mm-hmm. No matter how hard I try, I am not deaf. Yeah. Um, but I was headhunted for this role about 10 years ago because of my experience as a New Zealand Sign Language interpreter. Mm -hmm. Um, So one of the most critical parts for this role is to introduce the um, families, the whānau and the deaf babies to the deaf community. And I have to say the deaf community of of Northland has just been incredible. So we hold family gatherings where all the families can get together, meet each other. The children can... um, can interact with each other, the hearing aids are normalised, um, that the culture is, is normalised, sign language is normalised, and we have our deaf role models there, so everybody's communicating with each other. So, you know, I am um, I have a privilege to be involved in this, but I am hearing. Mm. So, yeah. um, so on Sunday, we did things a little different this year for Sign Language Week, and so we had our family gathering in in the Whangarei Library, Um, but we invited the public as well to be around, uh, to be involved. And it was just incredible. We had all of our First Signs families, all those children, the public brought their their children along and everybody just interacted with each other. We had so many different activities, sign language activities, um, and the children just just went for it. You know, it was fabulous. And... So really, really successful. And and I'm so grateful to Whangarei Libraries because, you know, you guys have been supporting the deaf community and sign language in the community for many years. And so, you know, hand waves to you guys for that. Mm. Well, thank you for thinking of us as somewhere to to do your Mm -hmm. event Mm -hmm. too. And um, I'm sitting here with, with Harry and those of you listening won't be able to see that when Harry talks, even though you're not signing, you're very expressive with your hands, which yeah, is cool, natural. which it's is natural. wonderful. And, and I do have to say, learning basic sign language is so, so easy. Mm. And I really encourage everybody to be brave enough and curious, curious enough to just give it a go mm. because it's so simple. Now, what is a good way for people to start who are interested in learning sign language? Is there any... Good question, good question. Well, we have our resident um, sign language tutor 
who's a stalwart in Whangarei and Northland. So we have Eddie who does um, mm. uh, um, classes, sign language classes. There's a, um, a sign language club that you can go along and um, communicate with other people. There's um, many online forums mm -hmm. to be able to learn. First thing you need to do is download the New Zealand Sign Language Dictionary. Put okay. that on your phone and um, and you can get any sign that you want. And uh, okay. when I was training to be an interpreter, we had a, a book this you know, like a big doorstoppy type book yeah. that had pictures for all the signs and everything. Now it's on the phone and you can have access to over 8,000, 9,000 signs and somebody's videoing it for you. It's right. just it's just magic. So that would Easy be now. presumably uh, a moving image, is it, yes, rather yeah, than a static book? Absolutely, rather than the, uh, the, the two-dimensional picture, mm. which depicts how you move your hands, what hand shape you have. Um, but somebody, you just press the video and, and you can see it wow. in 3D. It's just, oh, it's brilliant. Yeah. Mm. Well, Good cause, start. Because we always, uh, you know, I'm always talking up the book. You yes. Know, it's wonderful, <laughs> yeah, but that right. is an example of that's where right. the power of the internet, isn't it? Absolutely. And and um, so you're talking 2D versus 3D mm. here and, and sign language is a visual language. Yeah. And so... Yeah, I didn't mean to put down the book. Clean no, no, but that's Oops. a great example. Open mouth and sit foot. <laughs> no, no, that's that's a great example of when it's yes. when it's a wonderful tool. Absolutely, yeah. Well, that's good. Yeah. Um, and I'm just thinking, so for families of with we've born with tamariki that are deaf, mm -hmm. um, is it challenging for them to meet and? That's what the your group is is helping facilitate them getting together with other people. Yes, um, our co is we um, visit the families in their own home, mm -hmm. and so it's not challenging for them to go out. But yes, to have the family ga gatherings, that's where the magic happens, where mm. they can all um, meet each other and realise they're not alone, mm. and the struggles are not alone. The, the struggles are similar. And they can share their experiences and everything. So yeah, it's 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 pretty precious. Mm. Yeah, it's a real privilege to be involved in this. Yeah, I imagine it'd yeah. be, you'd get to know people really well. It'd be a rewarding job. Absolutely, yeah. Yeah, yeah, oh, fantastic. It's a real privilege. Look, it's um, Deaf Aotearoa you work for, is yes, it? Yes, that's great. Is that a government funded? How is that? Who funds that? Is the name? We get various contracts from various different departments, yeah. um, government departments. So the first signs, um, once clearly we're focusing on the babies, but there are other contracts for the deaf adults right. um, from Ministry of Education for deaf adults, um, and so so yeah, we get funding sources from all over, but we're always looking for more. Mm. <laughs> that's for sure, mm. you know, because um, we our first signs funding we were funded to. Um, support uh, another 180 children that was our latest funding um, and we've surpassed that target already mm. a year ahead of um, our target so that such is the demand so definitely always on the lookout for more funding so we can support more deaf children and more deaf adults. Mm. Do you have a sense of how many deaf Tamariki are you working with in Whangarei or in Northland? Um, in Northland I have um, up to 20 on my caseload, 20 whānau, but we yep. do have a waiting list now because right. the demand is so high. Wow. Mm. Oh, well, thank you for all the work you do. That's, oh, that's cool. So just tell us a bit more about the event you had here on Sunday. So you had deaf families coming together, but did you also have other, I want to say, random people just popping yeah, in? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So we had our first signs family. So they're all, the parents are hearing and their children are deaf or hard of hearing. Um, and so a lot of public families came in and joined in with the activities. Mm. So they were all hearing parents with hearing children. Mm. And uh, and so the deaf children, the hearing children, they all interacted together. We had lots of different activities um, and, and teaching different sign language. We had traffic lights where they had to, um, when we signed red, they had to be in a certain line. Um, when we signed green, they had to jump to a certain line. And the kids pick it up like this. Mm. They really do. And like I say, um, it's 
sign language is so easy. Now you can't, you're not going to be able to see this, but Glenn, what do you think I'm signing now for an animal? A rabbit? Absolutely. Yeah. I, I rest my case. It's so, <laughs> so simple. And the kids just picked it up immediately. We had, um, we had activities where they had to pull pull something out of a, a paper bag and then they had to talk about the shape and what it looked like and and learnt the signs for shapes and colors oh, yeah. and 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 yeah yeah it was it was really fun it was it was so fun and then at the end of it um, the, the deaf community told some of their own stories okay. about how it was for them to grow up and to be able to grow up when sign language was banned yeah. and so they didn't really? yeah sign language was banned pretty much for a hundred years in new zealand no way. oh similar parallel to te reo oh. uh, where te reo was banned i have no idea no most people don't um but yeah they the, so the deaf adults that that we um that are in our community went through school where they were um punished for being so for signing and uh, yeah, they'd have their hands tied behind their back and strapped if they tried to sign because the whole co-papa at that time was that um, they decided that the powers that be, the hearing powers that be, decided that if deaf wanted to live in a hearing world, well, they should learn to speak. So thus started the whole oralism regime where sign language was banned and they were taught to, to speak and lip read and and that yeah. and so thus the education was not adequate for deaf children they couldn't access um, education and that's why i'm so passionate about this first signs because this is a chance to make sure the same mistakes don't happen mm. to the next generation of the deaf community mm. where we thanks to the newborn screening program um, deaf children are, are diagnosed straight away and so i can you know like i met um, one of my little beautiful babies at two months old and um, and the first thing I taught mum was the sign for milk, which this is the sign for milk, because you're yeah. moving your hands up and down like you're milking a cow. Yeah. You know, yeah. I mean, and um, and so she was six months old when she went, yeah, I'm right. hungry, mum. So these these deaf children are able to communicate much earlier than hearing mm. children mm. who won't even start form, forming words until they're about 15 months. So. So yeah, it's a pretty, pretty amazing, amazing. service. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Well, I'll, I'll, uh, I have uh, for, for those people listening, we have at, at uh, our work done some introduction, introductory sign language courses before, and I can mm -hmm. that they're a lot of fun. I remember doing one with Eddie a few, quite a few years ago. Yes. Lots of fun, and I highly recommend it for anyone who's curious and wants to learn a bit more. Awesome. And definitely going to check out the app that you recommended. Oh, it's 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 magic. But once again, thank you. Well, thank you for chatting to me today. You're Thanks for uh, doing your event at the library and thank you for all the work you do. And I'll demonstrate this with one of my signs that I do now and say thank you. Oh, yeah. fabulous, Green. You're very welcome. Okay. Thanks, Green. Take care, Harry. Bye bye. All right, you're back on the shelf, uh, Whangarei District Library show on Beagle Radio, 88.1 FM. Mm, that was a really great interview. Thank you, Glenn, and thank you, uh, Harry. Yeah, Harry's amazing. She's really cool. Yeah, I definitely learned a lot that I didn't know before. Um, mm, I was really shocked about um, it being sign language being banned. I had literally mm, no idea about yeah, that. Did you know about that? No, I didn't know. Yeah. No, so that was really surprising. Yeah, it just goes to show how important it is to educate ourselves what, now that we can. Yeah. True. Yeah. All right, we're going to cut away to a song now. And... Um, uh, if you were listening before, I was talking about the book that I'm reading, The Three Investigators. And uh, in that book, most mysteries were solved by the the Sherlock Holmes character called Jupiter Jones. Uh, he was like a supreme logician who implicitly used the Occam's Razor Principle. Have you heard of that before? Never heard of it. No, it's not. I've, I've only heard of it in a song, which we'll get to in a minute. But the Occam's Razor Principle is that the simplest and most rational exclamation should be preferred to an exclamation, exclamation, explanation that requires additional assumptions. Oh, that's so interesting. I, yeah. Yeah. And uh, it's New Zealand Music Month, so we're going to try and play some uh, New Zealand songs. And when I heard... Uh, about the Occam's Razor principle that Jupiter Jones uses, it took me back to the uh, Minchik song from quite a few years ago, can't remember, late 2000s, uh, from their album Crazy Yes, Dumb No. Um, this is the Minchiks and Occam's Razor.
Right, you're back on the shelf. That was the Mint Chicks and Occam's Razor. A little more heavy than I'd probably usually play on the shelf, but I couldn't resist the connection with the book. That was good. Awesome segue. And that was kind of a vibey song. I liked it. <laughs> Great band, the Mint Chicks. Wish I had got to see them live. Yeah, they're disbanded now, aren't they? They are, yeah. Yeah. All right, so I think next up we were going to talk a little bit about the school holiday programs, plural, that we've had at the library. I think it was it two weeks ago at the school holidays. Mm. It? Yep, we've been um, yep, back into the term for two weeks. Back into the term, yep. So school holidays is also always like a, a busy and fun time at the public libraries. So we had both children's and teens um, programs happening with like various crafts and stories, etc., so I think um, we'll pass it over to our... Yep, we're going to start with our children's, children's librarian, librarian first. librarian, Mrs. Kite. Yep, she's going to talk about how awesome her program was. All right, let's listen to Mrs. Kite. Kia ora koutou. I'm here with Mrs. Kite, our children's librarian, and she's going to tell us all about the awesome school holiday program we've just had. Hi, Mrs. Kite. Hi, excited to be here. Awesome. So how was the school holiday program this time around? It was amazing. We had our biggest numbers. We had about 560 adults and children combined come over a five day period. And our first session was 150. So that was, that was a challenge, but we got there. Oh, it was really good. That's amazing. And uh, what's the biggest highlight for the school holiday programs for you? Like, what's your favorite uh, it's just always the same for me. I just love seeing the same families come. Mm. We have a lot of um, repeat families who come every holidays. And actually this holidays was really nice because some people came for the first time, but then they just kept coming throughout the, the holidays. And of course, my favorite bit is seeing all of the fabulous creations because they're mm. always way better than my exemplar. <laughs> Speaking of, did you have a favourite craft this time around? I know we did cute crafts. We did. <laughs> well, funnily enough, the one that I didn't like that I had made, and I was like, oh, this is a bit dumb, I don't think I like this, was an owl headband. And honestly, they just turned out so good. And there were all of these children around the library with these huge, big <laughs> owl eyes on their heads and amazing yeah. just amazing yeah. there was a particular mum and daughter who had matching ones with like this beautiful gold feathering and it was amazing oh that's so yeah, cool yeah just beautiful um what would you say is the benefit of libraries having school holiday programs both for the kids and maybe the parents too uh i think in this economy it's really nice to offer something that is free mm -hmm. and also um, that you just turn up. You don't have to book. You can just rock on up on the day if you feel like it. And yeah. um, that takes away the sort of time pressure of turning up to something where you've already booked in. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, and it's just really nice um, for children especially to come and see their friends from school in the holidays, but yeah. also quite a few of them bring their cousins or we've got quite a few kids who come every holidays and they actually don't live in Whangarei, they live in Walkworth or Auckland and they come up every holidays and spend time with their grandparents. Um, so yeah, so that's a really nice thing. But yeah, I just like that it's relaxed. It has a structure to it, but we're pretty um, easy on time and it's free. Yeah, awesome. And last question, what's your favorite part about being a children's librarian? Oh, this is so hard for me yeah. because I actually love it all. I love to buy books. I just really enjoy that process of going through and finding books for people. I often have children in mind when I purchase something and the children I've talked to and I'm like, oh, they'll love this. So I'm going to buy this for them. Um, but I also love the preschool fun time and I run a session on a Thursday mm -hmm. at 10am at Central Library and um, that's super super fun you get to dance and be crazy mm -hmm. um, I also absolutely love doing the craft and the school holidays it's just so fun to be creative and I also really love when I get to help people one on one when they come into the library and we get to talk about books and I get to recommend things so I would say that there's nothing 
that I don't like. You apart love it from all. getting up <laughs> for my alarm at 6.30. I don't like that, but I like everything else. And that's fair enough. <laughs> oh, cool. So everyone say hi to Mrs. Kite when you're visiting the library. Yes, and thanks come and see time. me. Okay, <laughs> see you later. Thank you. Oh, thank you, Mrs. Kite. Those were really awesome sentiments there. Um, and we also caught up with our teen services librarian, Milani, who has a little bit to say about how her teen program coach, went I'm on Milani. the holidays. Teens- oh, should we start that again? Sorry. Uh, let's go. <laughs> Here comes Milani. <laughs> Kia koutou, I'm Milani, the Teen Services Librarian at Whangarei District Libraries, and we just had our teen breakfast club over the school holidays, and it was a really, really great turnout. We had heaps of kids come in and do the crafts we had over the school holidays. So uh, the theme was upcycling items that anyone would find around at home. So that was your like empty jars, your your empty cans um, of spaghetti, things like that, um, old T-shirts as well that you never wear anymore. So it was really, really great to see what they'd make from that. So it was actually a highlight to see not just them uh, be get creative with the craft of the day, but also some of them did their own thing using the resources available and really made their own uh, thing and had fun with it. Um, so I really do think that is the benefits of uh, holiday programs like like that um, because it's a way to get uh, the teens out of the house and doing something creative, learning new skills, um, solving problems, things like that, but also just without the pressure of exams, of having anyone uh, marking your work. And so it's just, I think, creates an environment at the library when we do these programs of just a stress-free, no pressure way of exploring and being creative that I think is just really, really (laughs) a really great thing. Um, It also helps that us librarians like to be creative and do these crafts as well. I I think um, my favorite craft was seeing how many different things you can make out of an empty can, such as uh, wind chimes, a bird feeder, uh, lanterns, and a candle holder. So it's just really, really cool. It's really fun. Um, and also for for the library to host these programs, it's, it's really great because we engage with the next generations of library users and really try and create a space that is for them as well because uh, we get a chance to show them how cool the library is and what sort of things that you can do at the library. You can check out the books as well as uh, learn things, create things, and have access to all sorts of resources. Um, so, yeah, I'm just really, really looking forward to the uh, next holiday programs and, and the next school holidays and any other events that the library will plan and host and really foster that lifelong love of learning and of using the library. All right, thanks.
Melting Pot, another Kiwi classic for New Zealand Music Month. And welcome back again. You're listening to the Shelf uh, Whangarei District Library radio show on Beagle Radio 88.1 FM. And Glenn, I hear you've been in Wellington lately at a conference. What was that all about? Yeah, uh, so yes, I did last week. I was down in Wellington, lucky me, for a, um, a conference of public librarians. Mm. And uh, it's an annual conference. And I just thought I'd mention a couple of highlights from that. A cool. uh, couple of days I spent down there. One of them, uh, there was a speaker who was an author and a broadcaster, um, Australian Yumi Steins. Have you heard of Yumi Steins? Oh, yes. I think I've heard of her. I think we all might have heard about her in the news, was it, last year? Yeah. A bit yeah. of controversy around her, one of her books mm. um, being released. Um, so, yeah, I'll get to that. So she's a broadcaster. She works on ABC Radio in Australia. She also hosts a podcast herself. Oh, cool. Oh, just like us. And uh, about women's health, the podcast is called Ladies We Need to Talk. Um, she's a really interesting person, so just hearing her speak was really interesting. But uh, what's her relevance to libraries, you might ask? Um, well, she's written some adult books, but uh, probably most significantly for us, she's written uh, a series of children's books, a Welcome To series. Mm. So the books she's written so far... Um, Welcome to my period, welcome to consent, welcome to boobs, and most recently, welcome to sex. Yeah, that and was, it was the one that, was the one that about, yeah. uh, went a bit kind of virally mm. controversial. Um, so she spoke about her experience as an author and the effect of writing a book and then uh, all the fallout from that book online. Yeah. Uh, the furore sort of that erupted around her, the welcome to sex book. She copped a lot of online, well, a lot of abuse, mostly mm. online from what she was saying. Uh, accusations that she was grooming children and so on. Mm. Uh, f- from what I can see, these books are basically educational books mm. um, written uh, also with in partnership with the doctor, Dr. Melissa Kang, so they actually co-author the books. Um, so, yeah, we've got these books in our library. Uh, they're in the teens section. Uh, and her talk that she gave kind of linked in with the wider theme of the conference, which was around censorship in libraries, and so as librarians and, and as libraries, we try not to censor mm. uh, the yeah. information we're giving out too much, right? Unless it's something, yeah. how to make a bomb. We don't yeah. include books on that. But we try to include a wide range of viewpoints. Yeah, but just definitely. every library, probably everywhere, is facing pressures at the moment around that. So that was really interesting to talk um, yeah. and to hear her talk and talk about the wider theme of censorship. Yeah, that would be quite interesting. I know we hear a lot about book banning happening in America, and I think we've got like protocols in place in New Zealand. It's not so big of a issue here, although as we've seen by Yumi's <laughs> books, it, it's, it can happen. So, mm. yeah. I, I think with her book, I think the Welcome to Six one, I could be wrong, this is from memory, but uh, we do have a censorship office in New Zealand, mm. so if, if you object to a book, you yeah. can write to the censor or mm. the chief censor or whatever they're called and yeah. say, hey, look, I think this book needs to be censored and there's a protocol they go through to consider it. Yeah, I uh, know, But um, this book was viewed, these books were just viewed as educational yeah. books. Yeah, okay, totally. Yeah, I know Lianza, that's the Libraries and Information Association of New Zealand, have like an official like statement on the freedom of, of information specifically in libraries. So that's kind of a, an interesting one to check out and that's all about like, you know, freedom... Like the whole gist of it is like everyone should have the, like they have a fundamental right to access like whatever information they need, like mm. no matter what the subject is or if you agree with it or not, kind of thing. So yep. yeah, it's definitely yeah a, a topic of 
of interest within the library sector. Yeah. For sure. Uh, so uh, Yumi Steins, that's uh, who I was talking about. Another great speaker I'll quickly mention was Tish Hath. She's the founder of the Raglan Food Company, which makes um, coconut yogurt. I don't know if you've ever seen this in the supermarket, Carly. I haven't, but it sounds good. <laughs> yeah, well, it's great taste in coconut yogurt. Um, so she talked about her entrepreneurial story as a, a business woman, business person, yeah. um, how she got started in business. Um, interestingly, she was she was homeschooled and a massive book lover, loved libraries as a child, and she talked. She uh, spent some time growing up in Dargaville. Oh, yeah. And she talked about how when she was young, she absolutely idolised librarians <laughs> and thought they had the coolest job in the world, just surrounded by all these books. And, and rightfully so. Yeah. <laughs> and she took it further for a while. She was a volunteer at oh, the cool. Dargaville Library when she was a young person. Wow. So, um, yeah. yeah, she did a shout-out to the Dargaville Library, which was cool. <laughs> um, as well as being a business uh, person, entrepreneur, she's also written children's books and an adult book, which apparently is big in America. And um, she's now based in Raglan. She has a Whangarei connection. She actually said she launched her first, one of her first children's picture books in the Whangarei Library. Oh, that is so awesome. Yeah, no, I didn't wow, know that. small world. <laughs> Very small world. Um, that was about 15 years ago or something, so yeah. probably before your time, Carly. <laughs> uh, but as well as doing the business thing, she's now founded a philanthropic trust called the Values Trust, aiming to help climate uh, creatures and children's literacy. So that's really what she was, in a way, there talking yeah. about, apart from her own interesting uh, life story. Um, so she's coming from the angle that she notes that 40% of adults in New Zealand cannot read at a day-to-day -day functioning level. Um, so by instilling a love of reading at an early age, she's hoping to change that for the next generation. So with that in mind, with the whole declining literacy going on, she's trying to, well, she's not trying, she's doing a project to get uh, quality um, books into early childhood early childhood centres oh, around the country. So she's got this quite ambitious project to distribute approximately 1,000 little libraries with outstanding New Zealand children's books in English and Te Reo mm. into early childhood centres across Aotearoa over the next four years mm. with the aim of introducing young, young children and their whānau to the joy of reading. So oh, I think they're, awesome. they're starting off with 100, including some um, early childhood centres are in Whangarei, mm. which is great. Um, so they've got this tree that they make and send out, and in the tree sit books. So it's kind of like a really visually fun thing for children to see. It's really inviting, and it's the idea is the books will like live in the tree. It's made out of plywood, um, and they send this out to early childhood centres. And yeah, so they're rolling this nice out one. over the next year, over the next four years. Sounds cool, yeah. So yeah, I thought it was a cool initiative and nice to see a company giving something back um, with literacy, which is something we all care about sure. at the library. Definitely. Cool. And I think we're going to have to wrap it up pretty soon. We can run through a couple of events that are happening slash are going to happen in the library soon. Um, currently, we have a smoke-free slash vape-free showcase happening at Central Library, if you want to check it out. Um, that one's... Quite a cool exhibit by um, Otago Museum. Oh. Um, it's officially called Te Mana o Te ha, Smoke Free Science Showcase. It's well worth checking out. It depicts the harm that smoking and va vaping does to Kiwis. Um, the goal is to just create public awareness, and there's a lot of interactive elements to it. Um, yeah, so um, that's probably something that is worthwhile bringing the whānau, especially the children, to. Um, we also have Pink Shirt Day next week. That's a nationwide um, event. So that's on the 17th of May, which I believe is Friday. And that's um, organised by the Mental Health Foundation of New Zealand. And it's just a, a really cool anti-bullying campaign, essentially. So if you feel like dressing up in pink, we'll have some decorations and cool stuff at the library. So... Um, yeah, so that's happening. That's something cool happening. Um, what else do we have coming up? Yeah, check out our website um, if you want to see the numerous events coming up. It's going yeah, to be a busy a few months. Yeah. Um, silent, just running through a few quickly. There's a silent movie going to be shown. Silent movie, fun times as usual. There's um, uh, uh, flash uh, fiction. Um, um, what's that competition happening? Um, full information on our website. Some weaving 
workshops and yeah a whole lot so check out our website w um on the wdc.gobt.nz slash library page and yeah we'll hopefully see you in the library mm, excellent well thanks for tuning into the shelf it's been fun as yeah. always <laughs> as always yeah that was that was a good time okay all right kakite see you next time kakite